Hi, my name is Ron Dorn. I'm the developer of the GPH 112 class, along with a PhD student, Ryan Heinzman. This presentation is an overview of the syllabus and the grading of the GPH 112 lab class. So what I would like to do is to uh, do this in the way of presenting a PowerPoint presentation and this Zoom uh, recording. The first thing I'd like to point out is that the class syllabus exists in full form linked through Canvas. Second thing I'd like to point out is that some of the material that you'll be obtaining and listening to in the class are involves, you'll be asked for a logon and a password. Don't use your ASU Write ID. We have a general class logon of GPH111 and a general class password of Gaia. The reason for these is that sometimes you might want to share the material with a friend or a family member, and that's just great. You can provide them a link to a presentation or a lecture that way, and they'll get access. I want to emphasize that there are two different Canvas sites for the two different physical geography courses. There is the 111 class, which is a three credit lecture class. And then there's this class, which is the GPH 111 one credit lab class. But please don't be fooled that it's one credit and hence easier. These two classes are one and the same. You need both of these in order to graduate with an, to earn the graduation SQ lab science requirement. And the Arizona Board of Regents has very specific time requirements. And ASU has very specific task and learner objective requirements that have to be met. So this is not a typical easy one credit class. It will involve a decent amount of work. I want to emphasize also that these two classes can be taken independently. You can sign up for GPH 111 lecture class first and then take 112 afterwards. You can take it at the same time. You can take the 111 class as a seven and a half week class and then 112 as a 15 week class if you want, if you're eligible to that, if you're an on-campus student. You pick how it's done, except you have to take 111 concurrently or before this class 112. There's no textbook to buy. For the online version, there's no lab manual to buy. You'll just need to purchase geovisualizations, which are really GIS or geographic information systems that show spatial physical geography data. And that these geovisualizations enable you to complete the laboratories. The cost of you purchasing them is $15 a gain, and it ends up being the same cost as a lab manual used by on-ground students. Another thing to emphasize is that there are minimum system requirements for these geovisualization games. You won't be able to use a Chromebook, phones won't work, tablets won't work, you'll need a Windows or a Mac laptop or a desktop computer. The instructions on how to purchase and download the geovisualizations are on the welcome section of Canvas or the stage zero web page that you can access before this class starts. I'd like to explain the roles of the different people involved in this class. I am the professor that coordinates all the GPH 111 and 112 courses. I'm also the one who's developed these labs but working with other individuals. For example, my primary collaborator is Ryan Heinzman, a PhD climatology student. We're constantly evolving these labs, trying to get you material that's better and updated and responding to prior student comments. We want you to get your money's worth in tuition. ASU is a state-of-the-art university, and we think it's important that these labs are on the forefront of lab science education online. I may be the instructor for your class, or it may be an individual teaching the lab. The person who you should contact first is your instructor. They're the one that grades the assignment. They're the ones that hands out the grades. 
but you can always contact me if you have a question about the background materials or the labs in general, or you're having trouble getting contacts from your instructor. I'm the backup position. So first contact your instructor. Email is the best way to contact with personal questions, like great information. And if you send an email about great information, it cannot come from Gmail, Yahoo. It has to come from your ASU email account. Posting questions on the discussion board is the best way for everybody to benefit if you think your question is of general nature and will benefit other students. I'm available. Helping students reach your goal is a passion of mine. My email is ronald.dorn at asu.edu. I'm an avid mountain biker. And if I don't answer your email right away, it's either because I'm out doing field work or I'm out working with students, helping them do field work. How do you best ask a very specific question, such as an issue you're having with a lab via email? First, you have to learn how to take screenshots using your computer. Don't use screenshots using your phone. They're not really readable. If you don't know how to use your computer, ask YouTube. Go to YouTube and say, taking screenshot with Windows or how to screenshot with a Mac. Second thing, once you learn how to screenshots, take a screenshot of the question on Canvas that's bothering you. You can go back to the Canvas quizzes in GPH 112. So you can take a question, take a screenshot of the question, and then also the screenshot of what you're working on in the game. When you email the question, have the subject line of what the lab is and the question number. We can't read your mind. Some students just say, I'm working on this lab and I don't know about this. And it's like, oh, please back up. Let us know the lab you're working on, such as a stage zero Grand Canyon lab and the question number. And lastly, when you send an email, send it to everybody who's involved in the course to help you. There could be one or two instructors. There could be peer mentors on the Canvas page. You're going to get a list of all the people who can help you in the class. Email all of them, and that way you'll get a quicker response if one is busy. The first two assignments that you can do on the welcome module in Canvas is to tell us about yourself and then the syllabus quiz. You have to take the syllabus quiz and get all the right answers to be able to do any other assignments, real assignments in the class. But the tell us about yourself, you don't have to do. There are no points involved. It's just purely optional. And the reason why is that when I'm an instructor of the class, I read everything that you submit because I want to know about the students. I want to know about your interests. Big issue is due dates. A big issue that confuses students are due dates. There are no formal due dates for any assignment except at the very end of the session. The no due dates causes problems of students who are procrastinators. You need to set a pacing guide for yourself if that's you. 45 points are needed to earn an A. So if you're in a seven and a half week session during spring and fall, you simply shoot for seven points a week. If you're in a short summer school session, you wanna shoot for nine points a week. If you got off to a slow start, figure out how many weeks are left, figure out the grade you want, and divide the points needed by the time you have left. The key is working ahead and setting a pacing guide. The reason why all these assignments are due at the end of the semester is complicated. And there are a lot of people who disagree with me doing this. The main reason is that you can do all the assignments in any order. We want you to be able to pick the lab that interests you the most first to get off to a strong start. And then 
sometimes crises happen. A lot of students have families and job pressures, job pressures. Other students are in the military and they have big blocks of time that they can work on the class and then big blocks of time in which they're on duty. So it's the only way to accommodate all these things. I really don't want any failures. And the number one failure is for you to get behind. Don't do it. Some students are confused about why they're forced to take a laboratory science class. They might be a history major, or they might be an art major, or they might be an education major. Every major university that issues a real degree has lab science as a requirement. Science is involved in so much in society. The idea of a class like this is to get you to learn how scientists think. So if you want to know more reasons, please pause the presentation and read this material. Grades are a big issue for students. All the detailed information about grades you're going to find on the syllabus link in Canvas. The system in this class is called point accrual. Point accrual, as explained by Sebastian Dennering in a paper, is Sebastian's explanation is in the upper right hand corner and allow me to read it to you. Because when I read this, it changed everything about how I work as a professor. In typical grading, students either score the average grade of their performance or start out with an A and then see their grade degrade from there with every suboptimal performance. Motivationally, this is madness. Either you receive continued punishment for any glitch at the beginning, no matter how much progress you make after that, or you're put in a constant state of fear right from the get-go. In contrast, in a game, in a video game, you have challenges. Challenge by challenge, you overcome them, and you accrue experience points, and you level up. So the grade is based in this class on accumulated points. If you do not do an assignment, or if you get an incorrect answer, there's no grade penalty other than you'll have to do more work on other assignments to make up for the points you didn't earn. You need 25 points to pass with a D, 32.5 to reach a C, 40 a B, 45 an A, and 51 an A+. There's lots of points available. One of the aspects of a point accumulation system is that students can crash and burn at first. They might not take the first assignment seriously. More typically in this class, students try and rush through it because they think this is the Grand Prix and they just want to get finished with the class. So they do the first lab and they do really poorly and they email the instructor and they go, oh my goodness, what can I do? So the instructor will help you, the peer tutors will help you, but you need to have those extra opportunities. So there are four game labs, each worth 20 points total. And if you are really into the class or you need extra points, after you finish three of the labs, you are eligible then to do conducting research on a future vacation or gaming find a geovisualization lab to earn extra points. 99 points are available in total. These are the key syllabus highlights. I suggest you pause the presentation and read them. Again, to start all the assignments, you have to pass the syllabus quiz. To pass the syllabus quiz, you need to read the syllabus, but the quiz itself is done in an instructive way. Just don't forget what you're learning. A big question students ask is why GIS, geovisualization labs that play like a video game? Why do this? And the answer is it simulates real scientific research by exploring physical geography data and by answering questions. It moves way beyond fill in the blank answers. It moves way beyond topographic maps that used to be used to teach physical geography. Physical geography is a spatial science looking for the processes of the planet that explains the patterns we see. And these games allow students to do that. 
Research also indicates that this is a very powerful way for students to learn environmental science. So you get to interrogate the geology. You get to explore surface temperatures in a way that's far more intuitive than other programs. ASU students are also parents often. And it's one of the reasons why lots of students are taking the class online. If you have a kid who likes Minecraft or other video games, please give them control of the gaming controls or the mouse and play the game. You'll get them involved in your education and it'll actually help you because you'll be able to take notes on the questions by directing them to move the avatar and manipulate the game. It's good quality time with your kid and they'll also learn some academic language. I wanna stress that you should not jump into the detail of the labs. Please do first the stage zero labs and don't involve Canvas. Stage zeros are designed to give you comfort in doing this sort of a lab. I want you to have the PDF file on your phone or print it out. I want you to play the game on your computer and I want you to take notes physically on the PDF file or a piece of paper. I, the idea of stage zero is for you to learn how to do the game labs efficiently. Practice playing the game, practice extracting the data, get a feel for the real world subjects covered in the lab. And also you have less of a worry about incorrect answers because stage zero quizzes can be repeated. So you can do your best, work offline, go online, take the quiz on Canvas, and then if you made a mistake, you can go back and fix the mistake only for this stage. All the other stages you can't repeat. So the rest of the class involves geovisualization labs that can be done in any order. We present the labs in the order that makes the most sense working with the GPH 111 class. But we give you all the information you need in each lab independently to be able to do them separately. If you're unsure about how to play a video game, you can read my suggestions about how to play a video game from a Canvas website. I also made one of these Zoom recordings that's pretty silly uh, where I go play the game. I'm a 62-year-old professor. It took me a while to learn how to play it, but if you've got a youngster around, you can get their help. You can also post questions to the discussion board, but the number one mistake students make in figuring out how to play the game is the escape button. The escape button on your keyboard moves you in and out of the game and then the other aspects of the computer, like being able to access the menu on the game or the programs on your computer. I wanna stress that you have lots of points available, but you can blow the points quickly if you try and rush through. I wanna stress again that you can return to the lab quizzes. You should send screenshots of the questions you're working on and that there are 99 points available. The I want to discuss the, at the very end, the assignments, what happens if you need a few more points to earn the grade you want. There are two of these assignments, but I want to stress that there are prerequisites for you to access these assignments. You need to finish, why is the Grand Canyon so grand, the microclimates and vegetation, and the Hawaii labs. Those must be done before you can access these quizzes. There's two quizzes for extra points, conducting research for a future vacation, and gamifying a geovisualization. I'll let you read the pages that are available anytime on how to do these. And I'll cover here briefly conducting research for a future vacation. This is tough. I mean, it's not easy. I want you to follow my examples that are in the instructions like this one where you write a paragraph on information you've done research on in a file that I give you on Canvas. 
it's also available on the stage zero materials. In other words, I want you to read real good quality information about a place that you may want to visit someday, such as the bottom of the Grand Canyon. So nerd out, figure out what you want to go see and visit on a vacation. You must take a screenshot of that location in the visual, uh, from the visualization, and then you must write a paragraph interpreting what you see in that visualization. Each of these are necessary for full credit. You can do five of these explorations for a total of 10 points, but you may not pick these spots. You may not pick this place in the Grand Canyon, and you may not pick the Kilauea Caldera. Find some place you want to go visit in Hawaii on vacation, do the research, and investigate it and write it up. The quiz is nothing more than a slot for you to put this material up. So I want you to be able to work offline. You'll need to have the text ready to go and you'll need to have the screenshot ready to go. So you can load up the screenshot by clicking on the image button and paste the text in from your text program and then you can click the submit button. But you can't go back. So make sure you know how many points you need before you submit the, the button. You have five of these sites available for 10 points. I want to stress that when you ask a question on the material, please try posting it on the discussion board, at least if it's material that's appropriate to share with other students. Here are some other typical issues that I should cover at the very end of this presentation. 5% of the students in this class will fail because they ignore the due date posted on the top of the syllabus. I don't want you to have to repeat the class. Don't bother asking for extra credit. There's no such thing. Every assignment earns points, potentially. Lastly, no, third key thing is Canvas spits out information on the percentage and on the out of points, such as it might say you've earned 21 out of 35 points with a certain percentage. I would love to delete that stuff from Canvas. I can't. I just need you to ignore it. Only accumulated points matter. If you have a problem with this class, ask for help. If you have a problem with your computer, we can't help you. Your instructor can't help you. The ASU help desk can help. In other words, if you're saying my computer's not working with this or that, your instructor has no idea how to fix the computer problem on your end, call the ASU help desk. In summary, I hope you have a fantastic time with this class, and I hope you found this presentation useful.